Rather than Technology Services for coming and presenting today. Thank you. You got one down there, Dave? Right here. Introduce yourselves and we'll. Right. <coughs> Dave. Um, uh, is on? Yes. Dave, Dave Cummings, the Director of Technology Services and also the Chief Information Officer. Next to me is Dave DeVore. He's my budget uh, manager and he's my Chief Technology Officer. Oh, I thought it was on. It's it's my uh, eyes. He's new. He's it's new. okay. <laughs> technology gets. Not keeping up with the technology, apparently. That's it looked right. like it was illuminated. Uh, and on the very end, for the first time, is my senior manager, Chris Fricky. Uh, he's a, attending the Leadership Academy this year, and he will be one of the individuals that will uh, hopefully fill some of the vacancies someday when I leave. So we're excited to have him here today. Okay, technology services budget. Um, approximately 17,750,000. Uh, we have five um, line, uh, lines of business. Um, and before, actually, before I get started, let me tell you just a little bit about technology services. Uh, we do the full range of technology in the county. We actually don't do, the sheriff's office has their own technology staff. And uh, Wes has some, uh, some technology staff too out in the, uh, in the plants. Uh, but uh, pretty much our department services just about everything in the county. Um, from telephones to cell phones to fiber to uh, file servers, to CCTV cameras, um, just about everything uh, that we have going here in the county that's electronic, uh, other than the electronic cars. Uh, we have, like I said, we have uh, five lines of business, and I'm gonna kind of step you through those and the programs within those. Uh, the administration, uh, which is the office of the director, um, about $1.4 million. Um, <clears throat> some of the things that uh, we've done with some of the results within office of uh, the director is we want to uh, maintain uh, the county technology policy manual. And we're about 50% done with that and we hope to be 100% done uh, by the end of this next year. Um, we're trying to get our, all of our staff technically trained within the department, and that's one of our goals through the MFR. Uh, and we believe that we should be able to have them 100% uh, trained up and be on technology plans uh, so that we can provide adequate uh, support to the county. And then we have another program that uh, we don't very often hear about, which is our technology for teaching program, which is our surplus program. So when computer equipment becomes obsolete in the county, rather than having to pay to dispose of it, we have a nonprofit that distributes that uh, technology out through, basically th uh, through most of the schools here in the, in the county. And the life of that equipment goes on and on and on, lives uh, maybe another five or 10 years. So it's a real good, uh, use of uh, county resources uh, to get that equipment and extend the life on it. Uh, <clears throat> next line would be the countywide applications, and those are uh, applications throughout the uh, county for specific departments. Uh, one example would be the assessor's office tax and assessment uh, system uh, that uh, we support here in the county. And, um, also part of uh, that, and I'm gonna go through this a little quickly because I wanna allow you to have lots and lots of questions for us. Uh, geographical information systems, which is a, a pretty good size uh, group within our uh, county. Uh, uh, their budget is about $1.2 million and they do a lot of the aerial photo, uh, photography and stuff, uh, provide that here in the county and, and update all the GIS layers uh, in the county. Another area would be the web development, and we have a full web staff here in the county. And we support the uh, internet uh, and intranet uh, presence for the county, which is really very important uh, for the county and for the presence of the county. Um, other specific uh, department applications. 
Um, we have some key, key results on uh, trying to get applications uh, accessible via um, the mobile environment. Uh, this is an area that's going to increase from 50% to 70%. We're trying to get more and more applications out there uh, where people can access uh, and do business uh, remotely. And uh, that's working out very well for us. Uh, the biggest area, which uh, Mr. Fricky is in charge of over here, is our technical services area. We have a budget of about $6 million. Uh, within that uh, division, uh, we have three data centers. We have a call center. We have a hardware support desk. We have a whole group of microcomputer specialists that help uh, if you bring your laptops or iPads in uh, or your iPhones, they can help uh, with you fixing that. And we also offer uh, desktop support for those computers. We have a technical training center. And also in this area, we have a procurement section that helps and works with uh, finance procurement uh, to make sure we standardize on products, uh, hardware, and software throughout the county and in between the departments. Uh, we have specific standards we adhere to. Uh, purchasing department uh, enforces that, and we enforce that uh, ourselves. We have a software evaluation group uh, within the uh, department, and we evaluate any software that's bought in the county. And hopefully, everybody comes to us when they want to look at software and uh, seek our input when we do that. Uh, also, a big a part of uh, Chris's uh, tech services area is what we call sysadmins, and they support all the file servers uh, and uh, email and all the storage for uh, that type of work that we do. Uh, quite a bit of um, processing and money going on in that. We have a uh, long-term uh, technology plan, what we call our uh, uh, technology uh, capital replacement plan. It's a five-year plan, which means every five years we try to upgrade uh, all our specific te uh, hardware technology in the county. Right now we're in our second year, starting our second year for a uh, whole revamping of our network uh, installations within the county, all the hardware uh, we have on the network and also looking at some of the uh, replacing uh, aging file servers within the county. But it's kind of a rolling five-year plan that we have. Uh, technology changes very, very quickly anymore. Um, we've tried to come up and implement a PC replacement plan on a, a four-year cycle. That's a little spendy to do that, but the, I, the idea behind that is every uh, every year, 25% of the PCs in the county are replaced so that nobody's sitting there with old PCs when we do software upgrades. Uh, and believe me, some of the departments like to hang on to that equipment for a long, long time. Uh, telecom services. Basically, that's our, uh, the guys that do the phone service here in the county, put the phones on your desk. Uh, if you do an office move or move into new offices, they do all the wiring for you. Uh, they do the installation of the uh, fiber. Uh, within the county, which is separate than our, our CBX, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, also part of that area is our networking area. Um, the networking area uh, deals with uh, just, you know, just what happened a couple of days ago when we had all the ransomware and stuff across the, across the world. It was starting to hit everybody. They build the firewalls and they, and they do all the work to keep that the viruses and the spam and all the other stuff out as best as best they can. Uh, the last area under um, communication services is the uh, Clackamas Broadband Exchange. Uh, for those of you that haven't been here for a while, we applied for a a grant about seven or eight years ago. Uh, got the grant, built a fiber ring throughout the county approximately 200, 230 miles of fiber. And we're constantly working uh, to uh, get new customers on that fiber. It's a, it's a dark fiber. Uh, most of the school districts in the county uh, are on that fiber. Just an example I always like to use, you're probably getting tired of hearing it, but the Colton School District to get over to the Clackamas ESD was $10,000 a month. Well, they connected to us and it was $255 a month. So big savings for uh, the school districts. 
Uh, we've taken a look at what the CBX fiber has saved people over the years, and specifically every year it's saving them $650,000, and that's public agencies. Uh, so we've saved quite a bit of money. Right off, right off the bat, uh, when we dropped our uh, leased lines and connected in the fiber with just county agencies, we saved $100,000 a year right off the bat. The whole program brings in about $800,000 a year. Uh, we're building the business. We're rolling the money back into the business, and uh, it's growing. Oops, I skipped one. Business systems. This is uh, basically our PeopleSoft uh, system. Budget about $1.5 a year for that uh, and all the components of it. Uh, it basically runs our HR and finance here in the county and a lot of other uh, small systems. Um, <clears throat> Department-wide overview. Uh, department budgets, $17,758,817. About 22% of that is general fund. Uh, our revenue sources are, uh, we allocate. Um, and that's probably one thing I didn't mention when I started. We do every different type of budgeting in our budget. We allocate, we get general fund money. We do a lot of charging, uh, direct charges for our services. Uh, communication services and we also the CBX um, budget is totally self-sustainable they bring on in all their own money so we would hope to um, I think first of all with the with that on the CBX it's always been my desire to pay the county back uh, first of all we're, we bu we're budgeting some money to pay back peg funds which we use during the builds there's probably about another 400,000 that we had in matching money from the county. We'd like to be able to pay that back and eventually not have to charge any county locations for their monthly service, which would free up a lot of money in the department's budgets. And then go from there and see what we can do with any money we're bringing in. Um, major expenditure categories, of course, you're... Uh, your personnel budget's always a lot of money with benefits. Our, our maintenance and licensing, software licensing, paying Microsoft and all that's really gone up. Uh, we have a lot of capital reserve in our budget. A good example is uh, our phone switches. We have four phone switches in the county. We could actually be our own phone company, and we are. We're a phone company for Clackamas County. Um, we don't finance equipment when we replace a phone switch and we try to do one every couple of years. Uh, we build up capital reserves and we pay cash for them. Uh, we also do that on our hardware and our, and our uh, storage devices too. So there's a lot of capital money in there. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, money sitting in the CBX budget that it's coming in and going out uh, uh, because we're doing a lot of building, a lot of expansion. Um, and so those are are the major components of our budget. Uh, Dave, do you want to talk about the little pie charts? Well, this is basically a re-representation of what we were looking at for the different expenditures, give you a little bit of an idea where most of our line of business, where most of our funding goes. Uh, again, most of it is in technical and communication services. Uh, the rest uh, between applications, business administration. Um, again, this gives you a pretty good idea of where most of our funding each year ends up going. Um, the next pie chart, a little bit on expenses. As Dave was saying earlier, most of our, about half our money is going into personnel. Uh, materials and services takes up about a quarter of the rest of it. Um, this last year, personnel went up slightly, but the materials and services is going up more and more every year, mainly because maintenance contracts are getting more and more expensive, and we're taking on more and more maintenance contracts, as well as the county looks at other uh, solutions, especially anything where we're subscription services like cloud services. Those are historically pretty low cost up front, but they hit you in the long term. And so over time, um, our, we're seeing material service go up. Uh, cost allocations only about 10%, and capital and operating right now we're maintaining about a 13% expenditure. That will go up and down quite a bit each year as we hit our capital and as we try to fund our new capital replacements. Our goal is pretty much what you see like in the, the fund balance utilization, the next pie chart. We tried each year to map out over a five-year period, like Dave was saying, where we're going on our capital replacement. 
and try to maintain more flat expenditure as far as what we're charging the county, even though we may end up putting out a, a million and a half in capital one year, they, we may only see that the, uh, the county's funding actually maybe 700,000 or 800,000 because we build up the reserves to help hit the dips. So we'll have, you'll see our budget on capital go up and down quite a bit, but we try to keep a flat line as far as how much it actually gets allocated or charged back to the county. So our capital reserves will go and our operating will fluctuate quite a bit each year as we hit areas Unfortunately, like we are this year, where we're doing a lot of capital replacement. Uh, most of our uh, fund balance goes right now. We're heavily into fund balance because we move money from year to year to maintain those reserves and to fund projects that are multi-year. We have quite a few projects that take more than one fiscal year to complete. Um, so a lot of that you'll see going into like right now our capital reserve is about 600000 That's a little bit high for most years, but we're getting ready to replace a lot of network gear. So we're building it up, getting ready to to replace a lot of gear. Uh, communications, like um, Dave was saying, was the operating fund for our telecom. The rest of it spread across our smaller area, especially CBX, which gives capital about 331000 That's actually our funded par portion of the capital. Uh, if you look at the budget, you may see that the actual, like last year, we spent about $2 million in capital. That's because the way CBX does a lot of its budget, we will get requests for large projects from like a school district, um, like Lake Oswego is a good example. They actually pay us to build the fiber and then transfer the ownership of the fiber to the county. But that means that we have to go into supplemental budget each year, request authority to build that project, which increases our capital budget and our capital expenditures, even though we only really fund uh, in, the, in the budget about 300000 they're funding $2 million worth. So it goes up and down quite a bit each year based on what kind of projects they, we're building. They get reimbursed through a thing called E-rate. So at least 70% of the money that they pay us to build, they get reimbursed by the federal government. And that's that's going to be going away here pretty soon. And a great deal for them, though. I mean, it's a lot of school districts to really hook up a lot of their schools. Westland was just completed, and we're getting ready to start the Lake o We're actually in the middle of doing the Lake Oswego School District. So it allows us to expand quite a bit. It gives you an idea of where a lot of the fund balance we carry year to year, where is that going? So. Okay. Yep. Next one. I'm going to talk about that one. Uh, department wide budget overview continued. Uh, some of the projects we've finished up uh, this last year for facilities projects. With re uh, we did a remodel of the, our receptionist area and we did some access control systems in our TS1 building. <laughs> Our big, our big uh, project this year in our TS1 building, because we have two buildings. We have an old building over there. It was built in 66, but it's our building. Uh, and then the old assessor's building. Uh, we were going to mo move our data center uh, to the Silver Oaks building, and that just really hasn't happened. So we're going to go ahead and remodel, spend some money on remodeling our current data center. and. Uh, putting in some movable racks and stuff to where we can actually move that stuff out of there someday when we do get a real building for a data center other than that old, old building. Some financial trends. Uh, like Dave was saying, a lot of our money uh, is moved around in the budget uh, because of our, our capital pro uh, construction projects. Uh, our general fund supports up by 3.3 percent. Uh, charges for services overall in the whole budget 5.38 percent. Uh, all the tiers are under 5 percent. Capital reserve uh, cause, like we said before, causes a real variation in the fund balance. Expenditure trends. Uh, I touched on this a little bit before. Uh, overall technology budgets up 5.65. Personnel costs continue to go up. Uh, it seems like these young people we're hiring are deciding to have families and their medical benefits are going up on us. Um, maintenance costs uh, rose almost 10%. Uh, vendors wanting more and more money uh, for the same support. And the capital reserves increased due to the major projects. Our FTE, uh, we had 54.5. We moved one of our, uh, we actually moved one of our positions uh, over to a partnership with PGA to do content uh, web uh, 
I don't want to say development, web content updating. I had a couple of uh, temporary positions, and we were able also to pick up a uh, position for the MFR support. So uh, our total uh, FTE for this next year is 53.5 positions, and that 0.5 position is a half position. It's actually a full-time position that I share with Bob Roman or assess the assessor's office to do cartography. Um, also wanted to throw in there, we have an extensive internship program through Clackamas Community College. Uh, they have a degree program over there uh, for these kids. They interview and then they send them over and we uh, select those kids to come over and work uh, with our microcomputer specialists. And they're excellent. We try to hire as many as we can. They have great worth eth ethics. They think that 15 bucks an hour is more than anybody could ever make. <laughs> They have good attitudes and they want to get a lot of work done for us. Uh, and so we have quite a few people throughout our departments uh, where we've grown them through that program. And it's a really good way to see what type of ethics they have. If they can be good team members, which is really important, and if they're good hard workers. So it works out really well for us. And we've done some really uh, good work through employee services or human resources now. Mm -hmm. Uh, to pick up some of our uh, key positions uh, within the department uh, for people that know uh, the PeopleSoft type of applications. A couple of positions I'd really like to get down the road. If I can ever get a, <clears throat> and we're going to try to start planning for this, a business analyst that would interface with our departments and the other departments within the counties to talk about the type of technology that they would like to get and kind of try to steer them in the right direction. And another one would be, it's a very important position that uh, is very hard to hire for, is a uh, chief security officer uh, within the county. And um, I was just talking with Sherry Swackhammer, she's the CIO of Multnomah County, and they had just a heck of a time hiring one because the people that were really qualified that um, they interviewed wanted a lot more money than they were offering, and I think they were offering like 158000 So it was tremendous. So they self-grew somebody with internally and sent them to get the certifications, but it's a really important position. So it's something I've been talking about with Don and with County Council and Laurel Butman and some of the others about getting uh, some type of position like this. It would really help out. MFR support, yeah, that's a position that we uh, got this uh, last year. Don helped us out with that, uh, and we were able to get a position uh, to support the MFR push. Uh, we're in we're actually into our second year of the MFR. It's been real beneficial for our budget, really easy for us to follow our budget and have really uh, goals and things that we, we want to accomplish within the department and give us a good way of measuring uh, what we're doing. Being a uh, internal services department, uh, there's a lot of different things just internally that we like to be able to provide. <laughs> don't get excited, Dave. He gets excited about the budget. Uh, we don't really align with the, a lot of the goals of the county for providing services outside the county, but we just, we, since we're internal services, we provide services within the county. So we try to reflect those, uh, all the results that we have as to how we offer the services and what we're doing for people in the county. Um, I want to answer some of your specific questions. Dave, you want to run down through that or do you want me to? We kind of come up more ready here. So. All right, thank you for your presentation. I have a couple questions and it looks like some uh, sure. members have some questions as well. I just You mentioned you got four uh, uh, phone switches in the air. I was wondering what kind of your, what's your phone is a VoIP, a VoIP network that you've got? It's a, a mix. It's a mix of Avaya and Cisco no, or it's, uh, something it's mostly else. Siemens or I guess it's Unify is what they call themselves uh, now. Okay. All right. For um, your but, but it's a mix of um, mm -hmm. normal phone switches and uh, VoIP, and we're going more and more into VoIP systems. Yeah. Okay. Good. I was wondering about the the, the core network replacement that you're talking about. Is that going to be a Cisco base, or is it another kind of core network, <laughs> or is that another one of those, That's one of those transition opportunities yes. where you've got a mixture of core network that you're trying to move towards a standard now? Um, You've got a whiteboard. I could bore you for hours. No, it's a, I've, I've done that, yes. It currently, <laughs> we've looked at Avaya 
but because of the health of that company, we went away yeah, from it. Yeah, Avaya would not be a good idea since we're in bankruptcy. We really liked the, uh, <laughs> some of the Avaya products for the supporting the video cameras. I went yeah. down to Palo Alto and looked at their lab and watched them go through that, and none of the cameras dropped anything on the screens at all. Uh, just the financial uh, problems of that uh, company kind of made me leery. So You've been there, done that with Nortel. Okay. So yeah. we learned not to do that again. So I can yeah. still remember right. Nortel coming in going, don't worry, we're just going to Chapter 11. We'll still be here. And a year later, they were gone. <laughs> yes, right. So, seriously. Yeah. Right now, we're, we're still evaluating. We're pretty sure we're going to be going Juniper. But um, given the amount of money we're looking at in the three-year project and how it impacts the county, we're trying to be very careful to make sure both the health of the company and the technology, and the technology is changing a lot right now. Yes. So we're trying to be very careful in our analysis and make sure it's going to fit our long-term plans. Right, open source versus non-open source in terms of all where you go for it. <laughs> Are they going to support virtualization? Are they going to get yeah, yeah. working with cloud servers and so forth, everything? Yep, exactly. Um, and then on your data centers, you mentioned three data centers. Is that are you active, active, active at this point in how you're architected, or is it how you manage your data centers? I was curious in terms of how that that is, is now, or you're yeah. transitioning uh, to and to, just yes. kind of a brief overview. All right. So basically, the way it works is we have we when we build major technology stacks, and one for when we build uh, the major components, compute, storage, network, right. We're doing so in a more modular fashion. So instead of having to forklift everything every five years and bring in another million and a half dollars of kit to make it go, we're trying to design it such that we can get into a platform that then you can you know, take the oldest bit off and put the new bit on and you know, <laughs> kind of do things in a more cyclic fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing that with our, our general data center design as well. So we, have, we do have compute and storage in both data centers. And between... Um, uh, whatever the priority of the workload is and how we need to protect it for data retention and data recovery and all those kinds of things, we'll do a mix and match of backup and restoration technologies or replication or whatever's appropriate for that workload. Um, primarily, though, as far as activity, um, almost all of the work is being served out of the, the, the data centers on this campus, so the one in, in uh, DSB and well, right around, right around the room, and, and then uh, over in our building in TS, and then the one out at Brooks, which is where the sheriff's office live, we're kind of um, sharing some space there, and that's where our backup system is, and so it's farther away. And uh, we don't have a lot of active systems there, but it's kind of there with some space if we need to you know, do it. And we have surveillance systems all over the place as well. And then from a DR, I mean, COOP perspective is, I, I don't know if you, if, how sensitive it is to disclose too much, but is there a strategy in place in terms of if there were a regional event to maintain operational capabilities at another spot then at this point, or is that a like to have or need to have, that, or, that's or is that a developing ongoing. It's developing, that's, yeah. I mean, we have a certain amount built into our old infrastructure, and now we're looking more and more into how we can utilize either partnerships with other agencies, especially with our fiber. We are at a unique position to be able to communicate with other regional partners um, quickly. But we're also looking at uh, cloud so uh, solutions as well and start balancing that long term. Uh, we do have quite a bit of redundancy and coop capability built into our own infrastructure. But if something hits regionally, then I mean, if something hits this campus, we'd be in trouble. It needs to be out mm -hmm. of the region. Yeah. Yeah. So especially yeah. things like GIS, other things that we can actually share it's offsite for. Payroll is critical. You have to pay your employees if you right. expect them to show up in an emergency. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why cloud systems and things yeah. like that are, are desirable to at least evaluate. But at the same time, you know, just building Coop is not a funded thing. And so we have to build it in, into our normal operating yeah. process. Yeah, I understand. Especially things like the network layer and the phone layer. Because, I mean, it'd be great if you have all these systems that are out there. But if you can't communicate with them, they're worthless. So we have to build a lot of redundancy into our communications. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, some other questions here. Uh, Eric, were you first, or was? Okay, thanks. I have several questions, as you can well imagine. <laughs> um, I just want to confirm then your application countywide, page eight. Uh, the transfer of one FTE to the Public and Governor Affa Government Affairs Office. Yes, sir. 
That resulted in a decrease of $254,742 in the budget. That was part of it. Part of it was, too, is we had some, a supplemental budget from last year to help do a Drupal project that we're working on that that professional services is over this year, so that's not carrying over to next year. So that was part of the reduction into next year as well. Okay. A Drupal project is one that we are going to be going out to the cloud with. Uh, if you have any of those cloud questions, and it's something that's going to operate a lot better for us and fit that uh, specific need for the county, and we're pretty excited about that. Okay. Technical services, page 17. Uh, you have general fund support of 351319 yet you have built into this budget a reserve of 306958 and a contingency of 300000 can you tell me why we have uh, support from the general fund as well as these reserves and contingencies? The general fund portion is coming into how we do our capital plan. Uh, we have a process, which is this big old long process here, that if it looks at how much capital we've invested, allows us to take a portion of that that's depreciated every year, and that's how much we're allowed to build into our allocation for replacement. But if we see growth, that's above and beyond what that allows, that's funded by the general fund. So every year we look at how much is being covered by replacement and how much is actual growth. This last year we had growth of $300,000 above what we could get from depreciated capital equipment. So that's where that $300,000 is coming from. The reserves are what we're planning over our next five-year period to need to be able to keep up with capital replacement above what we can get from the allocation and from general fund to cover those replacements. And that's based on our estimates where it's going to take to replace our current equipment over the next five years okay. in pieces. A related question is what does the three-year major equipment replacement look like for fiscal year 1819? Because apparently you're in a second year of a three-year replacement process. Correct. It's about equal to what we're um, um, paying for this year in network and storage. I can actually break out all the numbers, but we have a big old long process, as you well know, that goes through and estimates what those numbers are, and then we look out five years. Going past 1819, it's taking a dip because we won't need to replace as much equipment, and so that amount will be reducing over, and we we'll probably see a reduction of that general fund hit because we won't need to replace as much equipment over those next years after 1819, okay. so about year 20. Telecom services, page 21. Uh, you have an explanation in there that you're trying to build up a replacement reserve fund, but yet the budget shows no fund balance and no contingency and no reserve for replacements. And so I was wondering, where where is that num money? Look at the narrative. I'm looking. We do have fund balance in there. I don't see any fund balance in this budget. Proposed budget is zero for special payments, interfund transfers, reserve for future expenditures, and contingency. And yet it's balanced. And yet down in the, in the narrative, you say you're building a capital replacement fund, and mm -hmm. you're reducing this fund the following year. The fund is built back up and rolled into the next year. So getting a balance. You know, we don't carry a contingency for um, telecom. A beginning balance, so I show a four hundred eighty-six thousand dollars. Now that's from the prior year. Four eighty-six is coming from correct the amended budget in FY sixteen seventeen. So for FY seventeen eighteen, where's the number that's down the below? We have um, fund balance of coming in because I'm looking at a brass. We have fund balance of four hundred eighty-six thousand coming over. That funds part of that, and then the rest of it is based on their fees and services that will go into building up their operating. And they're, they're looking at a capital outlay of around four hundred seventy-four thousand this next year. Yes, but you have you have no next year you have no it. you have no reserves going forward. They they will then whatever they don't use will then be sent to the fund balance into the next year into the next year into the next year. Their reserve is separate from the technology services reserves. I they, they're they're two totally independent reserves. Um, they don't. They're totally independent. The electronic services is totally self-sustaining. They won't hit general fund or any um, other services. They have to fund themselves. So they look at how much they need each year 
and roll that each remaining amount in fund balance every year. So right now they're looking at 460, 486 coming into this year that's not being used in operating basically this year, and then it'll go into next year to fund what they estimate 474,000 in expenditures. Whatever's left then will start rolling into the next year, plus whatever they have left over that they don't spend on projects and what they don't use in operating. They, they don't get to hit the general fund or anything else for funding. And they have some upgrades to switches and uh, some projects next year they're hoping to do. This last year they didn't do as much, so they were able to roll as much into this next year. Next year they're going to be pretty heavily hit. If you have any money going forward to 17 or 18, 19, it's only because you underspent the budget for this year. Correct. They, whatever they don't spend in their operating and whatever they make up in operating and what they make up in revenue from their, they build into their charges part enough to build the revenue. Whatever they have left over, I mean, whatever they get in revenue and whatever they don't spend in operating makes up the next year. And it will go up and down. They'll have years where they'll have very, very little left over in operating because they spend it, they build it up over a couple of years and spend it again. And they're in about a two year cycle. Okay. But they don't, they don't get a lot, for, and they don't get any other supplemental budget. No. Okay. Got, same question. Oh, okay. oh, right here. So, I, no, I'm, I'm looking. I had the same question. So if I understand it correctly, next year's budget under reserve for future expenditures and contingency in telecommunications services, there would be funding in there. Some of that would be leftovers, mm -hmm. and some of it would be earned income, so to speak. Correct. That's Thank correct. you. I got it. And then they basically, if they can't fund it, they have to wait. Okay. But so Answer's far, like their good. goal is never to be raise sure I rate. understood it clearly. Okay. Thank you. Did that clarify that for you then? Yeah. For now. Yeah. They don't get the, the ability to hit general fund. If they don't hit it, that's it. Right. Commissioner Emerson, did okay. you have that follow up question further then? That was my follow up. I, I have some others, but when okay. Eric yeah. is done. I'm Eric, done. you have a few more. Oh, yeah, I do. Right. Uh, do you know if the county has a policy that requires? approval by technical services before some department can purchase new software, seeing as how you're responsible for supporting it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, hardware, pretty much all the hardware comes through us. Software. Software, we have a program called uh, SEG, which is a software evaluation group. If they want something new or they want it built, we have to evaluate it first. If they want to buy it, they're supposed to go through us and get our approval first. Okay. Is that working? Yeah. Well, you heard it's getting say better. To. It's getting better. We're, purchasing is actually doing a very good job working with us to put some new rules in place that say <laughs> it can't slip through anywhere without us signing off on it somewhere. Okay. I think too many people have been burned by that coming to us after the fact when they've bought something that doesn't really work that they've kind of stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Using purchasing is the key because that's what we do in the city of Portland. Purchasing, which is there's a gatekeeper. It. Yes. Uh, well, it helps too because a lot of times someone will buy something we already have the licenses, and they don't yeah. realize it. And well, we found that out too. Yeah, and we have a new uh, purchasing director in the county, and uh, nothing gets by him. Let me <laughs> tell you, he's very good. Okay. okay. The uh, other question I have is, uh, we heard earlier that there was uh, rumors about replacing PeopleSoft. Uh, are you guys evaluating other software programs and? Yes, we are. We're looking at everything. Part of the problem with PeopleSoft, other than uh, Oracle Bottom, <laughs> uh, we won't even go down that road, <laughs> is that it, you know, it's starting to age out. You know, one, of the, one of the first things I did when I came here 20 years ago was because of Y2K, started looking at a new system, and they went with PeopleSoft. And we've had it ever since. Uh, the maintenance on that system is going up. And they're going to stop supporting the maintenance down the road. So it's probably it's a really good time for us start, to start looking around and see if there's a better fit for the county and how we do business. And there's quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of analysis uh, being put in by uh, HR and finance and tech services and all the, all the users of the system of what we really need this time. And so we make sure we buy or go with the right uh, pro uh, program. And what realistic, what will realistically be a time frame when we can uh, install it and still uh, make sure we're taking care of all the services for the county? So yes, there's been a big push and a lot of lot of uh, analysis done on that. 
SBA would be useful for talking with the different groups and getting the business analysis of their use cases to help with that along the way, I'm sure. We just, we just had lunch with, uh, it's kind of out of the blue, the CIO for Clark County. And they're going, what's the name of the? Workday. Workday. They're going with Workday, and we might take a look at that too. Mm. I guess Multnomah County went with uh, Workday. Mm. Uh, but uh, we'll take a real good look this time. Last time we were kind of pressured because Y2K, the big fallacy mm -hmm. of everything <laughs> stopping to work. And I was one of the programmers in the 70s that wrote those programs with two digit years. So it was partially my fault. <laughs> uh, but this time we're going to spend a lot more time and take a real good look at it because you know it's going to be uh, you're going to be spending some money to get this new system in, but it'll be a good one and work well for us. Okay. <clears throat> Another question I have is: Have you done an analysis of the cost of using cloud-based services rather than replacing the hardware, the servers that we have every five years? Uh, yes. Is, is that a better? Is that a better fit from the standpoint of a disaster recovery? Part of yeah, it's hard to, it's, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, the reality is, is the way the way these projects come to us, it's more on a business use case, right? And so it's not so much we quite a many quite a number of years ago we went down the path of virtualization, which did uh, massive amounts of hardware consolidation already. So instead of buying individual servers for individual applications and having that capital expenditure. We've centralized all that onto centralized servers and storage, which saved us huge amounts of money. And actually, the timing was really great with the whole recession hitting and all that kind of stuff. It worked out really well. Um, when it comes to the business cycles of the departments, though, and their needs, um, it, it's not so much a uh, uh, let's look at cloud for the county kind of a thing. It's more of, oh, well, this department has a need, so let's talk to them and see what the solutions are out there for that. And if there are some that are either on-premise or hosted, depending upon what kind of data is being stored, you know, what are our requirements from a state and federal level for chain of custody and security and all those kinds of things, right? Uh, plus a number of other factors. Um, we work with the department to determine what's the best way to go. And so, yeah, we, we keep our infrastructure such that it can be flexible and host as much of the, of the county systems as we need to and not be sitting idle, but we also want to be uh, capable of implementing and integrating some kind of cloud solution and making things work in that way too. So it's a shift for our department as well, skills wise. Okay, it's a little bit more difficult too, given that we are pretty much a cloud ourselves, how we service our the county, and so we're kind of almost trying to keep the apples to apples comparisons. But we've got what 50, 60 different types of companies that we represent in the county, and so we like um, we're looking at each. We can't just say it's a all the county versus a cloud, it's that one solution versus our one piece of our technology, how they map out. And some of them, it may make sense to go to the cloud, some it may make sense to stay here. And then it kind of depends on how much integration with other services do you want. And a lot of what we do is integrate with other solutions to make sure all the reporting and the data works. Well, if that solution's somewhere else, it makes it much more difficult. So it, it's a big, it's, it's, it's a, very, it's, it's new situation by situation, we really have to evaluate. Okay, and, and the last question, are you guys doing any support for the sheriff? Mm -hmm. We do, they have their own IT staff for their, their primary functions, uh, the sheriffy things, I guess you could say. <laughs> but where we support is like for the... Uh, sheriffy things. Right? I want you to quote that one. Yeah. <laughs> specific, <laughs> specific law they enforcement me. applications. Are right. <laughs> Uh, we support them on centralized infrastructure items primarily. So like network support, um, email, uh, we help them, uh, we partner with them we're, uh, as much as we can to help them, you know, make smart decisions when they're doing technology purchases and things like that. We're starting to get more and more involved uh, on a project by project basis with them. Um, so yeah, that's evolving, I guess you could say. We'll, we'll never like try to take over everything, it just doesn't make business sense for us, but. Right. Um, yeah, the collaboration is super important. Right. Okay, thank you. Mr. Humberson. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> First two comments. Um, one is I really like your capital replacement program. Uh, that kind of forward thinking, I appreciate. I have served on boards where that wasn't done and had to clean it up. And it's a long-term and expensive process when you have to do that. So I think that kind of forward thinking should be commended. Secondly, just so that the public hears it again, the fact that you're saving the schools 
even though it's not us, but it's the schools, which is the taxpayer, $650,000 a year should be noted by the service we're providing with our fiber. So I just want to make sure the public hears that again if they happen to watch this fascinating video that we're doing today. And let me tell you, my wife's a retired elementary school teacher, and you can hire a 1,000 teachers for that amount of money. Yep. They just don't pay them any money, but they're very, very valuable. So. So I, I just thing. I think it's important that the public kind of hear that message again. And then last, um, <clears throat> you brought up a question that I had, which was the business business analyst position versus the secure and the security position. And I know the business analyst is about trying to avoid different departments chasing the newest bright and shiny object and being a little more consistent within the entire county. Um, and the security position is somewhat self evident But if you had to pick between the two. Uh, Which would you pick first? The most important one is the chief security officer, I think, for liability for the county. A okay. um, little tougher to find, a little more pricey, and the secondary one would be the business analyst. You know, if, if I had my personal druthers, not the county at heart, it would be a business analyst, but the county really needs a chief security officer. We're, I think with all the HIPAA requirements and everything going on, uh, we are in harm's way right now. And we really need somebody to do that. It's a full-time position. It's not something that you could just take and say, you know, Dave, I want you to do that along with your other uh, tasks that you're doing. It takes a lot of certifications, uh, a lot of good experience. And those, those people that are really good at that really demand big bucks, big, big bucks. At any given time, we're in an audit. Um, TS is part of every single audit that goes on in the county. And whether it be health, IRS, housing, you name it, we're in an audit, and it's getting to be where the governance factor is so great, it's getting hard for us to keep up with it. And if you watch what's happening, a good example, OHSU just got it with a $2 million HIPAA fine. Just because they weren't encrypting their fobs and they were told to do it, and they didn't do it, someone got lost, got out in the field, and they got hit with a $2 million fine. We, we don't need that, and so we're really trying to find a way to keep us out of the newspaper. Well, I'm assuming our management team is paying close attention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. You've talked about network replacement equipment and PC. Is there a comprehensive IT plan for the county that not only talks about equipment but applications as well in the plan for the future? We don't have a comprehensive one right now for the whole county. We used to do three-year plans, yeah. uh, and it seems like uh, technology would change so much, people's ideas would change so much that those didn't work. We kind of do that through, right now, through our what we call our contacts meeting with uh, different technology contacts uh, in all the departments, and we meet every other month with that, with those staff. Um, so, no, we don't really have a long, long-term. Well, I'm not even saying old long, traditional. long but three to five years. It just captures not only equipment, but new application. I mean, we've talked about a new ERP already and things like that. We have a catalog of services that we maintain. It maintains this is what we'll support. Mm -hmm. And we base our capital replacement and direction on those services. So we have at least a, a baseline for looking forward. Trying to um, play the crystal ball forward of where we're going, especially as last year clouds has hit us like crazy and everything. Um, it's getting a little bit more difficult, and security is becoming more and more of a major component. And so we're going to have to reevaluate how we do that. Yeah, and I would echo your concern about needing a security officer as well. Yes, absolutely. Sure. We do when we, when we do our budgeting within internally within the department, we kind of look at out two or three years of where we're going, and, and we don't want we don't want to dictate dictate technology in the county because everybody has a way they do business, and everybody has a different idea on software products. Uh, but I do believe the county is uh, coming together a lot better uh, with doing that. Uh, I know. Laurel keeps a real good uh, rein on that and makes sure that everybody plays together and everybody is looking in the right direction. She has a pretty good technology background coming out of the city of Portland. and She knows her business. So, yeah, we, we've got good guidance here, here in the county. We're taking a look at it. Right, boss? <laughs> thank, thank you, Tom. Uh, Eric and Wilda have a question. Uh, you I just have, Eric I just, and then Wilda. I just have a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that your security is uh, is probably the biggest vulnerability right now within the IT system. 
And I'm, I'm wondering, have you considered hiring um, an IT auditor out of uh, like a, fr uh, a firm like Moss Adams who have that specialists in that area? We give you a baseline, at least let you know where the holes are, and you could work on fixing those right away before you hire somebody to do that because it's going to take time to hire somebody. We actually have on the network side a some professional service money built in a little bit next year to help on parts of that. I mean, that's a... It's a big scope, but on the network side, we actually have someone to see if they can basically do the pinhole testing and so forth for us next year to give us some of the baseline for some of that. Um, we are going to need to get some additional help to look at all the other aspects, although we do work a lot with our vendors. Um, we have quite a bit of uh, um, security-based vendors that we work with that are helping us on our various aspects, but um, it's going to be an ongoing challenge obviously I, I was just thinking you would get an independent review of the yep. whole process not tied to a particular piece of software like a vendor would provide <clears throat> right we, and, and you we could, just you, then they could tell you where the holes were and what you need to do to patch them and then you could go back and at least begin that process while you're hiring a security right officer. exactly Dave and I were just actually talking about this this last year about bringing someone in to do that That'd uh, be a very good idea, especially when the whole issue of the chief security officer came up. And I think the county was asking me to do it, and I said, no, I'm too old, and I don't know all the, have all the certifications. You really need a really good person to do that. Year, but year. while that was coming up, Dave and I were talking about doing that, and that's an excellent idea. Well done. Yeah. Go ahead, Wilda. Just a couple of quick questions, yeah. more for curiosity than anything. So... I mean, I realize we have to be buying new software and we've got, you know, specific programs and everything. And I found, even for myself, that when I switched from, like, Windows 7 to Windows 10, it was crazy, you know, and trying to, and then I have an iPad, so trying to understand the Apple product and, you know, different from the, the other, so on and so forth. So how are, did it again? There you okay. go. Okay. So all the, the different kinds of new software and... And, and everything, um, how are folks trained and how are those costs for training allocated? Are they to each department or is that something you guys do and then they repay you? And then what about the old hardware? Is there a market for that or does it just, you know, get recycled, you know, the recycle bin or something or, or what? Is that any kind of a, even a minority income opportunity or what was what? Okay. Uh, well, first, let, let me I'll address the, the hardware. Um, you know, any major big um, pieces of hardware we, we have, a lot of times, uh, Dave and I were just talking about the old tape deck we had. It was massive, and we had to bolt it to the floor because when it switched tapes out, it would kind of walk across the computer room floor. Something like that, nobody wants. Right. So that Except much, a museum, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> E-card readers seem to be out. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what we really surplus is a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the laptops That's and what stuff I was like thinking that. We have a, of, yeah. Dave wrote a, a program in a, during, when he went to George Fox to get his master's degree. And uh, he, he formed a nonprofit. And we actually take all the old hardware in the county like that and put it into the not a uh, nonprofit. It comes into our computer room. We decommission it. We have a website. Uh, the schools, uh, actually, the, also the fire districts, and About thirty nonprofits now too. Thirty nonprofits can get on there, and we post what we have. And first come, first serve. We've ah. probably donated over four thousand. Correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong. Four thousand pieces of equipment. Um, maybe how many thousand dollars worth? Well, I have to go back and add it up. I'm not sure. Boy, that well, would be quite a bit. About a few thousand dollars. But it goes out to the schools. Yeah. Well, uh, one very good example, there's a program in the Canopy School District. And we donate, I believe, laptops to them. It's called Summer Steam. It's a one-week program. And for one week during the summer, these students will take these computers completely apart, put them completely back together, install the operating system, and get them up and running again. And if they get a passing grade in the class at the end of the week, they get to keep that piece of hardware. Oh, awesome. These kids are fourth graders. Oh, my gosh. Fourth graders? We learn Java programming, too. These kids That's are amazing. That's like 11, 12 years old kids. 
Wow. The greater be probably nine. Nine? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. A lot of the equipment that we send out goes to computer lab because some, some of the people, you know, remember the old typing classes is just keyboarding. Well, they'll just use a computer for keyboarding. Uh, it eliminates a lot of money that they have to have in their technology budgets. So where does that money go? It goes into hiring teachers. Right. Uh, so it saves them a lot of money. And this equipment lasts for another 10 years, stuff that the county found not usable anymore. Right. So it's, it's a really good program. That's great. Um, and your other question? Training is a yes. good timing. Yeah. We're working Software. with HR right now on forming some new ideas are where to go with training, and a lot of that can be about because of the windows and office upgrades. We don't officially do training ourselves, although we manage the TLC. We'll do specialty classes once in a while, uh -huh. uh, especially as some new software comes on board, we'll help do something. But ongoing classes, especially Excel is a great example. We don't sponsor the departments, go to a specialty vendor, and they come in and use our lab. We are looking, though, right now working with HR on maybe a supplemental training, something like a computer-based training, that's more advanced and allows departments to utilize it when they need something special, like how to use a formula in Excel, how to go to the next step. So we hope to have that kind of training available this next year. Um, but it is an ongoing discussion, and it comes in waves, because there could be, if we stick to an office version for a few years, you don't see a lot of training needs. And then also we go to a new version, and it suddenly becomes the topic of the day. Yeah. And we'll probably do things like bring in CCC or bring in Kinetic or something like that to supplement training here in the county. Okay. Right behind this wall from you is a, a, uh, being a uh, educator from years back, a credentialed. Um, I was big on training centers, so we had one in the old modular across the street here years ago. Uh, when they built this building, we had them put a nice training center back in here. It's a state-of-the-art training center, and it's used, uh, and we just basically allocate mm -hmm. Uh, the departments for usage and everybody uses it it's booked constantly yeah oh nice okay. i wish i had enough room to do two of them but we don't mm -hmm. all right thank, thank you. you tom do you have a follow-up oh no okay, okay. Yeah. anything further hearing none we want to thank the technology services group for uh, their presentation thank you for listening i know yes. technology can be a little boring sometimes <laughs> not for some not for some <laughs> yeah.